I have no idea what that thing is. I swear it wasn't here before. I guess they built it overnight or something. It resembles a little bit the Luxor in Vegas. So I guess a casino or hotel. Who knows? Egypt fans, welcome to my channel. My name is Yana and this is Curves on the Road. Today's video will be about ancient Egypt. We were not confident enough to travel on our own around Egypt, so we have asked the travel agency Emo Tour to take us around and I have to highly recommend them. They were amazing and they had a great tour guide, Ali. Still has something about pyramids. Let's talk about pyramids a little bit. We have to go back more than 5,000 years ago. You have to imagine the river Nile was here before to change or to convert the coast to be downtown. In the ancient Egyptian history, we have about three kingdoms: Old Kingdom, Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom. And we have about 39 messages. All the pyramids were built in the Old Kingdom from 2,800 years to 2,200 years BC. So in 600 years, the ancient Egyptians built 139 pyramids. All the pyramids were built in the west side. You know why? No. 5,000 years ago, the ancient Egyptians saw the sun comes from the east and sets from the west, and that is repeated every day for the next morning. That's why the ancient Egyptians started to worship the sun because the sun gives them the ideas of life, death, resurrection and eternity. According to this kind of belief, this kind of cult, the ancient Egyptians built all the pyramids in the west because it's a sign of death and sun sets. We climbed a couple of stairs to get to basically one of the entrances, the old entrances of the biggest pyramid of Cheops or Hutheth as they say in Arabic. We're now at the second largest pyramid. The largest one is behind me and I'll show you inside the tomb. I didn't go myself because I think I'm way too claustrophobic to do so, but you'll get the footage, don't worry. If you don't really die without seeing the inside of the pyramid, don't go. There's really literally nothing to see. You'll see what you can see, I'll spare you the money and time. That's not worth it and it's quite a claustrophobic experience. Uh, there's a big difference if you enter the biggest one, the Cheops one, or the, the second one. The second one is only 100 Egyptian pounds and 400 for the big one and it's the same thing. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend either, but if you have to, do the cheaper one. The entrance to the pyramid is really narrow and small. You have to get on your knees or crouch through the halls and it's nothing pleasant and imagine that it's really hot in there. And add some crowds and yeah, that's basically the experience you're getting. And if you think, okay, I'll endure all that and then I'll see some beautiful frescoes on the walls that I know from the pictures of the Egypt. Yeah, you won't. There's literally nothing there. There's the place where the sarcophagus used to be and that's basically it. The name of the pharaoh that was buried in this pyramid is Hefren or Kafre. We're at the pyramid view of the pyramids. The one that seems smaller is actually the tallest one, but it's optical illusion that the second one is actually 
looking like it's the long, uh, it's the tallest. You can take camel rides from here. We won't be doing that. Like the camel would have to sit on me so that we move. So definitely not doing that. Does this also make you think of Aladdin? Or it's just me? Oh, I come from a land, from a faraway place, where the caravan camels roam, where it's flat and immense, and the heat is intense. It's better break. Okay, it's home. Let's talk about the Sphinx. <laughs> As I told you, that's one piece of rock. It's made of limestone. It's about 57 meters long. The head 20 meters high. That is a piece of the King Catherine, the owner of the second pyramid. A piece of a man to represent the wisdom with a body of a lion to represent strength and power. Let's talk about the broken nose of the Sphinx. We have three stories. The first one about Napoleon, the French leader. When Napoleon came to Egypt, he thought the Sphinx as a target for shooting fires with his soul. Oh no! He could control situation and he wanted to say and think he's so strong and powerful king. The second one is, in the ancient times they thought there was very bad spirit living inside the Sphinx, that's why they destroyed the nose. The third story, I believe it, I imagine it's a two, it's my phrase, mm -hmm. okay. In the 19th century, a Muslim Sunni, his name is Sa'im al destroyed the nose by himself because some Muslims at that time worshipped the Sphinx against a god. To say and to prove for the people with just a piece of rock, nothing else, he destroyed the nose. That's why I believe in that story. Thank you so much. This is the biggest Sphinx in whole Egypt. And. I always thought it was a woman, it was like a female face and lion's body, but apparently it's a king. Too bad. I think I liked it better as a female, but then the nose, maybe the guy can pull it better. Strawberry juice from real strawberries. First impression, strawberry juice. Really, really good. It's like milkshake without milk. And now tasting guava. Really good. Something I've never had before. Amazing. And one more juice on the tasting menu is from the sugar cane. Hummus. Some soup or something. Salad. Pickles of all sorts. Despite majority of Egyptians being Muslim, there are quite a lot of Christian churches in Cairo. This one is called a hanging church because it was built on top of the ruins of two Roman towers from the old Roman fortress of Babylon that was built in 98 AD. It is the oldest Christian church in Cairo and it is believed to be built on a spot where Mary, Joseph and Jesus rested at the end of their journey into Egypt. The roof is built in the shape of Noah's Ark. This church is dedicated to St. George. The Coptic Church has special connection with St. George. They consider him the true model of a young Christian man. And the Copts call him the Prince of Martyrs. St. George is patron saint of farmers and shepherds, but you always see him in his most famous position, fighting a dragon. All of these churches are Greek Orthodox 
and they were built within a Babylon fortress in Coptic Cairo. We're at the citadel of Cairo. It was built by Saladin and how he picked the place. He told his servant to take pieces of meat to different parts of the city and all the pieces came back rotten but one. The one on the top of this hill stayed fresh so he knew it would be cold enough and nice for his palace. There are two mosques in this complex. This one is the older one. It's called Green Mosque. And you have probably noticed the pillars. They're from the Greco-Roman temple that used to stand at this place. I have the whole city of Cairo beneath me. On a clear day, you can even see the pyramids in the background. The most dominant building in the citadel complex is the Blue Mosque. We are inside the Blue Mosque. Check out the ceiling. It was built in the Ottoman architecture style. It's actually not that old. It was built in the 19th century. The interior walls are covered in alabaster. Muhammad Ali, who had this mosque built, invited a Turkish architect to construct the mosque as an exact copy of the two domed Sultan Ahmed of Blue Mosque in Istanbul. We were staying at the hotel that was called the Best Pyramid View. The bit looks nice, big. What on earth is that? Okay, never mind. They give you water, which is really, really good. And now the truth. We expected to have some view of the pyramids from the room, but that was not the case. Overall, it was very cheap. Like, the accommodation was extremely cheap and you got what you paid for. But the terrace, yeah, that one was spectacular. I really like the pyramid view from there. If they are tempting you to go watch the light show at night, there's really not much to it. Just basically they light up the pyramids in different colors. So that's it. That's all I have to show you today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely rest of the day. Bye. And then we took a night flight to Luxor.